Hi, Tony Selzo here. Welcome to Zipline. You know, today is a great day because I got to spend some time with and really come to know one of the, the young up and coming CEOs of technology company that's changing the landscape here in Indiana, changing the way we're really consuming technology, how businesses are going to market, creating products that have an entire ecosystem of mobile and technology coming together to provide the customer a better experience. And I've watched and seen some of these guys' clients come into my office and I've seen some of their work firsthand. These guys are really doing some cutting edge stuff in the mobile space but not only just the mobile space online and getting that all to work together. Anthony Smith started, you know, really as a, an intern that, that kind of stuck his hand up after getting his first job and saying, I don't want to do this anymore. Created his own business, bought himself, you know, a new identity. How's the path been going, Anthony? How's being an entrepreneur? A little crazy? <laughs> so uh, people say this all the time. You have to be a little crazy to be an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, there's a lot of risk involved, and so you have to be willing to uh, to uh, be okay with you know going bust. Yeah. Um, that's that's part of the the crazy entrepreneur entrepreneur sphere, right? Yep. You Go took the risk. Home. You put it out there, and now mm -hmm. and you know you know what you won, dude. You you got like five employees you're you're growing you're you're you've got a, a viable product a viable you know value proposition and people are starting to find out about sticks and leaves i mean you guys are doing some cutting edge stuff yeah i mean we uh, we've been really fortunate um where we have been able to uh <clears throat> to really cultivate relationships with some of indianapolis's uh you know up and coming entrepreneurs um, so that, that's been that's been really great for us, and we've been really excited, you know, to, to work here in Indianapolis. Uh, I think it's one of the one of the most uh, one of the most interesting places to really start a business, especially in the startup world. It, it's really incredible. You it, it, just talking about your niche. Some funded startups has really been where you've kind of caught some momentum. People mm -hmm. are starting to see what you're doing, and and that's really getting you the exposure and the attention that is starting to get other people to start to, you know, kind of come in your door and see that you guys, hey, we got chops here, man. We can compete with the left and the right coast. And guess what? We can probably do it for, you know, two thirds, if not one third the cost, right? Because our cost of living is cheaper. We got the, we got the talent. We turn out more IT engineers than any other state in the nation. Hey, we're not afraid to take these guys on. And I think that's what you guys are doing. Some East and West Coast kind of uh, sophistication right here in Indiana. Yeah, I completely agree with that. that I think that's a really good point. Um, Indiana has a lot of really good advantages that you – uh, don't necessarily have on the on the left and right coast. Right. Um, <clears throat> cost of living being one of them. Right. I can I can live for very cheaply as an entrepreneur who's just starting out mm -hmm. um, and be pretty comfortable. You know, I don't have to live with thirteen other people. You know, in a in a eight hundred square foot apartment. You know, just to make ends meet. Um, and so that's really attractive. I think, it, and it's been a huge help for me um, as an entrepreneur. But like you also said, we have. Uh, some of the nation's greatest schools here in, in Indiana, and right. a lot of them are concentrated around Indianapolis. You know, we've got um, <clears throat> we've got Purdue and Bloomington, Notre and IU, Dame, and got, Rose Home, and right. And, and right. you have done something very smart. You built a great core founding team. You've got to yeah. went in. You know, you found people who are going to share the dream, share the why. And I think that's one of the, one of the powers of what you guys are doing is you've got this incredible va value around agile development, around taking agile even more agile as a small company. I mean, one of the things that you were telling me is how you how the clients pay you and paying you up front the week in advance and making sure you agree and recap the the day on what you are going to actually do because, like you said, startups you know their environment changes and they need to be able to pivot on the fly. I think that's part of the the, the not only the sophistication about what you're doing but the plain old just you know elegant smartness of doing it a little bit better a little bit different and 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 that's kind of what makes sticks, sticks and leaves go am i am i wrong or does that make sense no yeah so uh, what we see uh throughout uh throughout the lifetime of the company uh working with our clients we see that startups they don't have a complete set of information mm -hmm. when they're starting a project Mm -hmm. um, they have, you know, they have their dream, right? What they want to do, mm -hmm. um, but they don't necessarily have all the reality uh, in their corner yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what we do is we allow businesses to uh, really uh, 
inspect their business on a on a very short time scale. And so right. that way they have the opportunity to um, build something, you know, see what see what see what's going on, get it out in front of a prospective customers or friends or whoever uh, to start prototyping, and then we make decisions on a weekly basis rather than um, you know going down a road and finding out that it's not what their customers actually want. It, it's all about that feedback loop. It's all about tighten the feedback loop. So mm -hmm. whatever you're going to market with, you're you're getting that direct response and you're making you're getting that to the smart people on the front lines that are developing whatever is going on so they can continue to evolve that to make it better. I mean, you know, we set out with a vision and here's where we think it's going to go. And a lot of times along the way, we get we get information and feedback that takes us in a completely different direction. And we need to be able to do that and listen, you know, to to the marketplace. Right. I mean, that's pivotal. You know, so you're going after these funded startups. It, I really believe that if you, if someone is looking for a mobile intensive product, that you guys have that kind of value to really to understand that how to make that the heartbeat. Um, is that do we agree that's part of your guys's DNA? Yeah, yeah. So mobile. Um, I mean, that's just where the world's going, right? And so that's where we're going as well. Um, and so we uh, we do have a lot of resources that we put into mobile. Um, and uh, to be able to allow businesses to really understand mobile and what mobile can do and what uh, what's the difference between you know mobile versus web and so um, and so that's kind of how we structure our business is really looking at the mobile side of things. Getting that all built in, getting that MVP out, getting something that we can take of that second stage and third stage of funding. I mean, that's really where I kind of put when I'm advising people who to who to look for and, and, and your name comes up. That's where I think you guys have a tremendous unfair advantage. And, and beyond that, I think you understand how that whole ecosystem works together. Now, here, I got want to ask you one question since you're one of my, you know, uh, young entrepreneurs that's really kind of hitting it and making it work. Is 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 this is this town is hard to? Or do you feel like that that you have an, uh, um like you can go to market and you can compete with the big boys on the east and west coast? Do you feel like Indiana is giving you that that unfair advantage that I do? Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. Like I said, um, <clears throat> it's cheap. Indianapolis is just a cheaper place to be, right? And so it really allows you to free up your resources to be able to put money into marketing, marketing and sales and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you do have the ability to, you know, to reach the people within your market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a great city. It's a great town. You got a great company there. Now like in business 2 years, right? Three years? Four, four years, almost four years. Four years, you've got five people and growing. You've got an agile shop. You've got young, committed people that are doing some cutting edge stuff that are, are really not afraid to think out of the box. Sticks and leaves is right here. Hey, you know, the one thing I think your business truly implements, and this is what I wanted to tell you, the, the compliment I want to give you. One of my uh, favorite entrepreneurs and mentors said, you know, the difference between being an entrepreneur and an engineer is an entrepreneur will um, change something till other people deem it valuable and an engineer will fight with you until you see it being valuable, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you guys got your head around both those sides, that yin and that yang, and getting that to work together by your model, by your system, and by how you're taking your stuff to market. So kudos to you, man. I really appreciate you being on the show. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Anthony.